For the aggressive Navy fighter pilot, the world of air-to-air -air combat is what flying is all about. It's a world that demands that every fighter pilot be knowledgeable in aircraft, tactics, and people. The fundamentals are which are built success and survival in a combat environment. Section members must work together, must know their weapon system, and must be able to take full advantage of their aircraft's capabilities. This film will portray tactical formation principles that are the basis of ACM, air combat maneuvering. From the great air battles of World Wars I and II, Korea and Southeast Asia, has evolved the loose concept of tactical air warfare. Two aircraft operating as a section offer many proven advantages. Two sets of eyeballs can detect opposing aircraft earlier. A coordinated team of pilots can work against an opponent to advantage and turn a defensive situation to an offensive one. Two pilots can also switch the tactical lead back and forth to whoever has the best overall picture of the situation. Strict radio discipline is mandatory. Two pilots working together as a team can learn each other's reactions, enhancing the effectiveness of their capability to operate successfully. Tactical formation, in contrast to the rigid environment of basic formation flying, allows flexibility and innovation to help the fighter pilot fly his aircraft as an effective weapon system. The basic cruising mode of flight is the combat spread. The aircraft are flown a beam and at a distance of approximately one mile. This distance will usually vary with airspeed and altitude. The wingman will normally fly with a step up on the lead of a thousand feet. This altitude advantage will provide the wingman with a slight energy advantage when maneuvering. Combat spread affords advantages unavailable in any other type of formation. Maximum visual coverage is afforded. Although each pilot has his six o'clock blind area, the spread distance helps each pilot to keep the other man's six in sight. The adaptability and flexibility of this formation allows it to transform very quickly for offensive or defensive maneuvering. Also, neither team member has a tactical advantage or disadvantage over the other. Either member can assume the tactical lead. Tactical wing formation, used primarily for practice maneuvering, has evolved from the fluid tour formation tactics of World War II and the Korean conflict. The main advantage of this formation is the heavy concentration of firepower derived from the close alignment of the two aircraft. When in wings level flight, the wingman flies on either side on a bearing of 55 degrees and at a distance of 400 to 700 feet. This bearing expands vertically during maneuvering to allow the wingman a conical-shaped area to remain in position. When in level flight, the wingman must have a step down to allow the leader to maneuver rapidly. The position must never be so low that the wingman cannot see the leader's helmet. The lead must be able to see his wingman. This formation is excellent for practice maneuvering. However, lookout by each member is decreased. And the maneuvering limitations placed on the leader to allow the wingman to stay in place make this a less desirable mode of flight than combat spread. In all fighter tactics, the three-dimensional world available for flight provides the arena for combat. In combat spread, the abeam position must be maintained at all times. If a wingman finds himself out of position, correction for bearing is top priority. A beam distance is secondary in importance, and step up is accomplished last. If arriving at the proper spread distance, but behind bearing, sucked, that is, lower the nose to descend and gain speed moving forward to proper bearing.
When you have corrected to the abeam position, though below the leader, climb slowly to the step-up position while staying abeam. If you should find yourself moving ahead of the lead, that is, acute, raise your nose to slow the aircraft. Approaching a beam, lower your nose to maintain position. Perform S-turns if required, while slowing to the proper airspeed. Adjust power as necessary. Maintain lookout at all times. From combat spread, changes in direction of flight for a section follow specific formats. Call turns are given for heading changes in 90 degree increments. For turns into the wingman, the wingman's initial bank will be 15 to 20 degrees, while lead's bank will be 30 degrees. As the wingman crosses in front of the leader, the leader scans the wingman six. And if no bogeys are present, calls six o'clock clear. The wingman will turn to pass 2,000 feet ahead and stepped up to 1,000 feet above the leader. The wingman drifts slowly outside, increases bank, and lowers his nose as required to arrive abeam after 90 degrees of turn. For turns away from the wingman, the leader turns with a 30-degree angle of bank. The wingman assumes a steeper angle of bank and noses down to gain speed. The wingman turns toward the inside of the leader's turn to pass 2,000 feet aft and level to slightly below the leader. As the wingman passes aft of the leader, he scans the leader's six and, if no bogeys are present, calls six o'clock clear. The wingman shallows his bank and noses up to arrive in the abeam position as the leader rolls straight and level. When the wingman is out of the proper combat spread position, corrections during the turn will allow re-establishment of the correct abeam position. For instance, for turns into the wingman, whether wide or close abeam, the wingman must pass ahead of the lead at the normal 2,000 foot distance. When wide, the wingman delays his turn to avoid rolling out in an acute position. After crossing, an angle of bank steeper than normal will be required. When close abeam the lead, he increases his turn rate to cross at the proper distance ahead of the leader. Then using a relatively shallow angle of bank, flies out to the correct combat spread position. For turns away, whether wide or close abeam, corrections during the turn again serve to re-establish the proper abeam position. When starting from a close abeam position, delay your turn initially. Cross at the normal distance behind the leader, then fly to the proper combat spread position. When wide, a hard turn nose low will be required to achieve the airspeed and flight path necessary to correct your position. You may have to cross the lead's flight path lower and with more nose to tail distance than normal. Remember, arriving at the proper bearing is your primary objective. In the fleet to reduce radio transmissions, uncalled turns are virtually SOP. They require alertness on the part of the wingman. A wing rock indicates the direction of the turn. The underside of the leader's aircraft shows a turn away from the wingman is to be made. The top of the wings shows a turn into the wingman. Turns by the leader will not always be level 30 degree angle of bank turns and may be for more or less than 90 degrees change of direction turn procedures follow the call turn methods.
If turns continue past 90 degrees, the procedures reverse for each 90 degree increment. When a wingman passes behind or below the lead, he must have an airspeed advantage. If the lead rolls out early, this energy advantage will help the wingman regain his correct position. If unsure of the direction of the turn, the wingman should always assume a turn away. If the turn is into, closure is rapid and easily detected. Recovery is accomplished by reversing and continuing with turn into technique. If the turn was away and the wingman proceeded as for a turn into, separation would increase rapidly. Upon recognition of the lead's turn away, the wingman will have to sacrifice excessive altitude to regain position. Radio transmissions are minimal except for tactical transmissions. Whenever in combat spread, the wingman must be prepared to go into loose deuce maneuvering. From loose deuce, a weak or inexperienced opponent may allow the section to assume tactical wing. Tactical wing allows a section to maneuver in phase, yet to split if necessary. The wingman should stay in phase and maintain 400 to 700 feet nose to tail separation. Tactical wing is used only when enjoying the advantage over engaged targets. Since a section in tactical wing cannot attack and defend simultaneously, should an adversary gain an advantage, the section performs a vertical split to loose deuce. Loose deuce maneuvering employs two aircraft in an alternating vertical split and requires teamwork between section members. If a bogey moves in on a section, the first teammate to spot him assumes the tactical lead, whether or not he was the section leader. He calls an in-place turn with the bogey at medium to long range and offset slightly to one side. This turn places the section head on with the bogey. The in-place turn direction and rate are determined by the tactical leader. It is normally a sustained energy type of turn. A bogey rapidly closing to firing range dictates a hard turn. Tact lead determines the duration of the turn. It is the maximum turn rate that can be achieved while still maintaining your energy level. If a bogey is detected at medium to long range in a section's six, a cross turn will reverse the section's course to engage the bogey head on. The team member spotting the bogey calls the turn and is the tack lead. Turning into each other, normally the tack lead will go high as the wingman goes level to nose low. At passing, vertical separation is approximately 3,000 feet. After calling the turn, the tactical leader makes a hard nose-high turn at military power. The wingman makes a hard level to slightly nose-low turn into the lead. Just prior to passing, each member clears his mate's six. The wingman calls visual as the lead comes into view. When a bogey has closed in to weapon range on one section member, a break turn is called by the spotting member. This turn is a last ditch maneuver to destroy a tracking situation. The turn is an instantaneous maximum performance turn into the plane of the attack using maximum G available without departing the aircraft. Use momentary bottom or top rudder to compound the bogey's tracking solution. 
Do not stall or depart the aircraft to assure a kill for the bogey. As a tactical team member, you must know your aircraft's flight and weapon system capabilities and how to take advantage of them. To operate effectively, you must always be alert. When section teammates work together, they go a long way toward being around a long time.